If you're a beginner and want to make some meaningful income with faces YouTube, then you're in the wrong place. Go somewhere else. Jokes. I've monetized a few channels, spent over 10k on courses, make my living from YouTube, and I've had this video sitting in my video home base for quite a while. And I've waited until now to record this because there's a lot of hype around faceless YouTube and how you can leverage AI. You should know I've done it relatively successfully, but it's not as straightforward as people make it out to be. This video, guide, course, whatever you want to call it, will equip you with several things. Number one, an understanding of how YouTube works, giving you the foundation that 95% of people on the platform lack. You'll learn how to go viral by taking luck completely out of the equation. It will give you all the context you need to pick the right niche. And following on from that, how to come up with unlimited video ideas and how to package them to get views. How to leverage AI to create your first video, even if you have no experience whatsoever. Trust me, I got my fiance to make one and in 15 minutes, she produced this. Do you want to travel Japan? Here's a perfect five day Tokyo itinerary for first time visitors. Finally, you'll learn how to turn this video and subsequent videos into a meaningful source of revenue. And I'm going to do this as efficiently as possible so we can both get on with our day. To be successful on faceless YouTube, you need a why. So let me give you my why, my YouTube philosophy. And why I think you even being here is a really smart decision. When we are starting a side hustle or a business, we're looking for one thing, leverage. I think of leverage as input versus output. If my input is high and my output is low, I have little leverage. If my input is low and my output is high, I have high leverage. I think of leverage in four ways. Labor, get people working for you. Capital, get money working for you. Code, get software working for you. And content, get content working for you. The difference between all of them, limits. Labor and capital have limits, code and content don't. And this is due to the cost of replication. People can only deliver a certain amount of work every day, whereas software can deliver an unlimited amount of work every day. And the cost of running that software generally doesn't change. Let's go a bit deeper. I'm pretty sure that code is quickly going to become commoditized. With the latest advancements in AI, an engineer in five years time might be able to do the same amount as a team of 10 engineers today. All right, Dara, what does that mean? It means that distribution is going to become everything. So whether you're in this to earn a little bit of passive income or to build an empire like we are, this is probably one of the highest leverage steps you could be taking. So give yourself a pat on the back for being here, but not too much. You still need to know what you're doing. Lots of people end up going viral, but they have no idea why. In this section, I'm going to run through exactly what it takes to go viral. This can all be boiled down to just two words, supply and demand. Think of supply as the number of videos covering a topic and demand the amount of attention people have allocated for that topic. If there is inadequate supply for a topic that has a lot of pent up demand, the video will exceed regular performance. Let me explain this with an example. We all know what happened to the Titanic submarine. Before this event occurred, both supply and demand for this topic was zero. And when the submarine went missing and exploded, there was a lot of pent up demand with no supply. One channel that took advantage of this was 2Bit Da Vinci, and he supplied and captured all of the desired attention around this topic and clocked up 15 million views in four weeks. I mean, this clearly went viral, not necessarily because of the number of views it has, but because of the number of views it has relative to the subscriber count. This tells us that the video went above and beyond his current audience. Now you understand how the supply and demand dynamics related to this video going viral. Unfortunately, this is where people close the laptop, get complacent and start making a very common mistake. They see this video released only a month ago, clocking up 15 million views. They get excited and they think, oh my God, I can do this too. Too. They can do this too. Except now they've forgotten about the supply and demand principle. If you check this topic now, sort by videos released this week, you'll find that the supply has massively increased, but the demand has massively decreased. Leading to channels like this releasing similar videos to this one and are completely underperforming. Unfortunately for these people, supply and demand is a function of time. Timing is a massive element to whether a video can go viral or not. So you need to consider this. And there's no one definition of virality. A video may only have 5,000 views, but technically it may have gone viral because the market size for that cohort of people may be 10,000. Moral of the story, you don't need 15 million views to be successful. There are other factors that influence virality, like remarkability, packaging, and the delivery of the actual video itself. But as far as I'm concerned, the video supply and demand dynamics are a prerequisite to going viral, not an option. 
In this section, we're going to go through how to choose a niche. And this is generally the part of the video where the person speaking goes, Go to ChatGPT, ask it for a bunch of niches, pick one of those niches, and then move forward with the next step. Oh my god. No! God, please, no! No! This is what I'm talking about when it comes to leveraging AI in the wrong places. I'll show you how to leverage ChatGPT and other tools later on in the video, but when it comes to choosing your niche, if you want to guarantee that you're going to waste your time and your money, go ahead and do this. Go ahead and ask AI to determine your life's future. If you don't want to do that, I have one word for you. Intention. Sit down, order an Americano with an extra shot and write this down on paper. Why am I doing this? Answering this question very intently will help you choose your niche. You're not doing this to unlock your inner chakra or find yourself. You're doing this because you want to start off on the right foot. These are some common reasons that I've come across. I want to generate leads for my business. I want to be famous. I want to earn a meaningful income so I can quit my job. I want to get rich or I want to build an audience. Look, if you're going to accomplish any of those things, you need to position yourself towards that goal. YouTube is like crossing the Atlantic. You may wish to go from my hometown of Cork to New York, but if you go off one or two degrees in the wrong angle, you're going to end up in Colombia, which is where I am right now. For instance, if you are doing this to make money, but you have no idea what it is you want to talk about, I would spend a bit of time researching the supply and demand dynamics of various niches and find a white space where there is a lot of demand and very little supply. Make sure this is a topic that you are somewhat interested in because it's going to consume you for the foreseeable future and take it from there. To find this white space, do some research on videos that perform well in certain topics. Analyze the subscriber to view ratio of these videos. Take into account when these videos were released and see if there's still pent up demand for these topics. You can use a tool like vidIQ here to determine the views per hour for certain videos. Find out where you can stand out and even create your own market. This here might be quite useful for you. If you're in a situation where you want to do this to make money and you know you want to make videos about finance, you'll find out pretty quickly that the supply and demand dynamics for finance are heavily weighted on the supply side, meaning it's very saturated, meaning I need to figure out a way to separate myself from the current market or or find a way to create new demand with that audience that has not been tapped into yet. Take, for example, the topic of AI right now. The demand is very, very high, but the supply is definitely keeping up with it. And most channels and creators who are only going one layer deep are getting video performances like this. They're underperforming. But if I spent a little bit more time thinking about it, I can try and create my own demand in a new market. Instead of talking about all the latest updates in AI, I can leverage its demand and train AI how to walk and how to figure out puzzles, among other things. And a couple of channels have been smart enough to create this new demand within that market, and they are being rewarded. Another approach to choosing your niche here is to integrate the Ikigai framework. Ask yourself these four questions. What am I good at? What do I love? What can I be paid for? And what does the world need? Find a topic in the middle of these four circles and you'll be pretty hard to stop because I never bet against someone who just keeps showing up. And if you find something in the middle of that Venn diagram, you will stick with it. Once you have this decided, go to Canva, choose a color palette, create a logo and a banner image you can use in your channel and whatever other assets you need. And if you're a design phobe, pay somebody on Fiverr to do that for you. There is a revenue component to choosing your niche that will dictate where the majority of your revenue will come from. This is highly personalized and I don't really want to give general advice here and mislead people. So if you do want some help, DM me on Instagram, I'll try and get back to you or have a look at my consulting page and we can set up a call. In this section, I'm going to cover ideas and packaging and both are very highly related, which is why I'm talking about them under the same umbrella. And this is my favorite part in the entire process. Now that you have an idea of what type of content you want to create, it's time to figure out who your avatar is. Because once you know who you're targeting, you can come up with unlimited video ideas. I've developed an avatar spreadsheet that asks me all the questions I need to answer to figure out what my view is interested in watching and this is especially useful for people who are developing like edutainment type content you can download it down below completely free it will take you an hour and save you 100 hours trust me now that you have a few ideas worth exploring the next step is to pick one of those ideas and write a script no 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 that's not what you do that's not right you don't write a script yet before you even think about writing a script, you need to come up with the packaging, the title and the thumbnail. You do this because the packaging is gonna influence the hook, the intro, and what the whole focus of the video is. I stole this example from George Blackman. I'll leave his socials up here. 
go follow him. He's very, very good at script writing. But he's encapsulated why packaging is so important with this thread that I went. Once you have a video idea, you're at the stage where you want to make a video about X, about something. And what he's done is he's given us an example of a thumbnail here regarding the Hiroshima bombing. He's not giving us the title yet because there are various ways that we can frame this kind of video. The first thought we have is, I'm going to make a video about the events of Hiroshima. The most valuable thing you can do at this stage is figure out how you are going to frame it. Because you could make the mortal sin of doing something like this. Why was the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima? There's a big issue with answering just this one big question. The issue is that you can find an answer very easily with a Google search. People are not going to commit 10 minutes to watch your video because they can spend 30 seconds to find out a more concise and more in-depth answer on Google. Yes, there's a curiosity gap, but it's not one big enough to be filled. Another way to look at it. What happened before, during, and after the Hiroshima bomb was dropped? This is fine, but as George said, this feels quite fake. And again, I already think I know the answer to this. I know what Japan was like before the bomb. I know what Japan is like now, and everything else is kind of inconsequential. But if I decide to go with the angle of why isn't Hiroshima a nuclear wasteland, there are a plethora of questions that I'm currently asking myself. How can people still live there? Is there still a problem with radiation? If people can live in Hiroshima, why can't they live in Chernobyl? This opens up a curiosity gap between what the video is promising me versus what I know. And the video is positioning itself as the answer to that curiosity gap. When it comes to packaging your idea, you need to answer three questions. Number one, am I creating a question in the viewer's mind? Is it a curiosity gap big enough for them to watch the video? Number two, am I positioning my video as the best way to have their curiosity gap answered? And number three, if I were to look at my title and thumbnail independently, would I still be able to figure out what the video was about? Do this and you're in good shape. There are still many more elements to consider when it comes to packaging, like making sure it's clear, idea formation, finding repeatable formats and integrating funnels, but that's for another day. Thumbnail preview is also a cool tool to help you understand what your video looks like in and amongst other videos on YouTube. And if you decide to hire someone on Fiverr to create this thumbnail, please do not skip the steps that we have above. Fiverr thumbnail designers know how to design. They don't know how to get your specific viewers to click. Giving a thumbnail designer $20 and a vague description is like walking into a hospital with a broken leg and being given a wet sponge. <laughs> it's not gonna do anything. When it comes to writing your first script, it is really easy. All you need to do is paste your video description into ChatGPT and let it do its thing. <laughs> Listen, you're gonna find it very hard to write an engaging script using AI if you don't know what an engaging script looks like. There's a lot in this, but here's some rules to get you started. Deliver on the title and thumbnail straight away. Give the viewer confidence that your video is going to deliver what you promised them. Otherwise, it's effectively clickbait and they'll click off. Two, for the first 30 seconds, be extremely clear and precise. No faffing about it. Apply the ka ha ka framework. For an in that's supposed to be catchy, it's absolutely not. Catch the attention with your packaging, hook them in with something that piques their attention, keep them by reaffirming the title and thumbnail, and convert them by communicating the value they're gonna get from watching the video. Next tip, focus all of your efforts on providing as much value as possible. No unnecessary information. Give the viewer promises and deliver on those promises shortly after. Don't let them wait too long. Insert rehooks into the video. An example of a rehook is where you think these scripting guidelines are useful, wait until we get to the video editing section. Do not ask for something without giving first. And if you want to leverage AI, ChatGPT is very useful for simplifying language. One prompt that I often use is I give ChatGPT a paragraph that I've written and I'd ask it to change it to a Hemingway grade three or four. What ChatGPT will then do is convert what I've written into text that is structured in a way that somebody in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade can read. It simplifies my language and makes it easier to digest for people. The best tools to use for script writing are collaborative tools like Google Docs or Notion. Notion is my personal favorite. I've developed a creative system on Notion that you can get yourself if you want to skip all the heartache and getting everything up. A lot of people have found that useful, so I'll link it down below. And now that your script is written, you need to make your first video can be daunting for a lot of people. But remember when I told you that there are some AI tools that will help you? When it comes to video editing, this is its time to shine, especially if you're a beginner, because video editing is the most expensive and time-consuming part of this entire process. Videos that I create on this channel take between 40 and 60 hours to produce and hundreds of dollars, but I have a lot of conviction to do these videos because I've been doing this for quite a while. 
when it comes to faceless YouTube, you can be much more efficient. Without a shadow of a doubt, the best tool for beginners on the market is NVIDIA. It's an online tool that allows you to create videos, add voiceovers, background music, and you don't need any experience whatsoever. Like I said, my girlfriend produced this in about 15 minutes. But what I get quite excited to see is its text to video feature. Like watch this, this is a script that we're working on for a face channel we have. Let me put it in here. Wait a second, like what? <laughs> like that is insane. Never mind just putting the clips together, I can add a voiceover, music, change around clips to transitions and like forget about all that. What makes me really upset here is that before I found in video, I paid $500, which I do every single year to access like stock footage and motion templates. But here, like you have over, I think it's 8 million clips from Shutterstock and iStock that are just included in the paid versions, which are a fraction of the price. And that's only the stock footage. Now, one thing I would say is that the paid versions are the only ones I've used because the free plan is quite restricted. I used a business plan and I've never needed to upgrade after that. Now, I do want to say NVIDIA have given me some soup here to talk about them in today's video, but I'd be recommending them anyway because they are a bloody phenomenal tool. Product Hunt, Trustpilot, 7 million other people, including David here, think the same. Hello. And I've managed to negotiate you guys a cheeky little discount. Sign up with the link I have down below and use the code DAR25 and you'll get 25% off. In video, thanks for keeping the tax man off my back for another month. Fun fact, when ChatGPT came out, a developer friend and I started developing this exact tool as a side project. And when we found in video, we just stopped because we knew they were gonna do a better job than we ever could. Anyway, the next step is to publish your video. But up until this point, you've done 95% of the work. All you need to do is upload your video to YouTube and input the title and thumbnail that you have already designed. At this stage, tags and product descriptions are not going to move the needle much in the video's performance, but fill them into your heart's content if you really want to. This is where most people stop, and that's why most people that start faceless YouTube end up failing. Because this is where the work begins. The next steps are simple. Post your videos, find out what works, repeat. But to do this reliably, you need to capture attention with a strategy and a plan. This video has equipped you with the tools and the knowledge to get started. This video will ensure your performance compounds and you can start generating some revenue. That's all from me. I will see you in the next one. Slum.